Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, or if you've been here before, you can probably notice that head to toe, I'm looking a little bit different. I've been with Nike Golf for a long, long time, been very lucky to be with them, but for this year, we are going a different direction, and I'm now with Melbourne. So, as you can see, it's a different aesthetic. I'm looking pretty casual, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think it's a cool company, cool to be a part of, and I'm really excited to show you some of the looks that I'm gonna be coming up with. If you guys like anything that I'm wearing, go to melbournegolf.com. You can use my link, I'll have it down in the description. Be sure to check that out. But beyond that, where you guys saw me at the Kingdom a few weeks back, getting fitted for everything in 2024, I'm lucky enough to be here at Isleworth Golf and Country Club, which is my home course. I'm gonna take you through what I ended up with after that day at the Kingdom, kind of the specifics of all my clubs, shafts, lie angles, everything like that, and just give you more insight into kind of what I'm looking for. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about here is wedges. I think it's the best place to start. So I've got three 60 degrees here. Um, you're gonna see that they're all very different. So over here, I've got the 60 degree low bounce, which is an eight bounce with kind of that little bit of a different sole. I then got the TW grind, which is a 60, it's got 11 bounce, pretty standard sole, but as you can see, there's just a little kind of bevel there at the front. Allows me to just get under the ball so that leading edge doesn't sit too high. Then this is the most unique one. It is a 60 degree, which is a very low bounce. In Titleist, they call it a V grind. And this is the lowest bounce, and the bounce is also quite a bit further forward. So this is gonna dig the most. I use a Dynamic Gold S400 in my 60 degree and 56. The reason for that, it's just slightly softer than what I use throughout the bag. It gives me a little bit more feel through the head, which I like. All right, so the, we're gonna go through the 60 degrees first. We're gonna start with the wedge that I'll probably use the most, which is the 60 low bounce. Alrighty, so we move on to the 56. Now this is way more standard. This is less like I've um, got different bounces. I'm gonna travel with 156 degree. It's got 12 degrees of bounce, super standard sole. I might use this a little bit around the short game area. Basically, if I get a really grainy lie, a little bit more bounce, need to run it a bit more, very basic shots. But for the most part, this is gonna be a pitching club. All right, moving on to the 52 degree. Once again, a very standard sole. Uh, this one, we have nine degrees of bounce. I use this for runners around the green, but other than that, it's used for pitching. It's gonna be full pitches, in between yardages to get the back flag. So this just has to be a very square face club. I don't need to play around with the sole too much because I'm gonna be hitting mainly the same shots kind of over and over. I have everything about two degrees flat as well. Um, I think that's worth noting. It might be three degrees flat in the wedges actually, and two degrees flat everywhere else. That just lets me release the club as hard as I want. It's never gonna go left. It's a nice feel. But the only difference here is I've got the Project X 6.5s in the 52 and now onwards through the irons. I'm happy to put the iron shaft in there just so I can hit my numbers a little bit easier. And it's not spinning on those full shots quite as much. All right, into the irons now. So I'll start in the pitching wedge. I use a P7MB. That's gonna stay throughout the four iron. So I'm gonna use blades throughout the four iron. The reason I use blades, just a little bit more workability, turf interaction. I actually think it helps me focus on center contact. And that's something I don't think a lot of people talk about, but when I did go to a more cavity back iron, it felt too big, so I felt like I was starting to hit shots really hard with less of a focus on hitting the middle of the club. When I have a blade, I feel very focused, especially in tournaments, on hitting the middle of the club. I'm probably not gonna go over it each one of these clubs because through the irons are gonna stay pretty similar. So Project X 6.5, uh, same with the P7MB. This is a club I sometimes change around between using a cavity back or a blade in the forearm. If my spin numbers are correct, I will stay in the blades as much as I can. So the three is where I change. So we're into the P7MC now. This is a long iron into par five, or kind of a stinger fairway finder off the tee. Basically two shots. That's what I need this and the two iron for. On a standard, I want this carrying just under 250. All 
Alrighty, into the two iron. This is a specialty club for me. This doesn't stay in the bag. This will be in Europe, in Australia a little bit. Anywhere where there's not gonna be a lot of drivers off the tee. I don't love this club into the greens because I've still got that Project X 6.5. So this thing comes out hot. I struggle to get this up in the air and I don't really want to try to either because I have to change my swing for that. So. so let's kind of move into the woods. This is where things get a little bit more interesting, I think. So we are going to go with the Speeder 857TR. This is something that's been very constant in my three wood for a very long time. Um, it is the TX Flex, which is just the Tour X. So it's quite stiff, it's tipped as well. I've always liked in my wood, so anytime I put into a graphite shaft, you'll see the same out of the driver. I like the shaft to be basically as stiff as possible and I certainly don't want it kicking. I'm quite a high speed player. I think my three wood, I'll probably swing pretty close to 120 miles an hour. So I never want to feel like I'm losing the face through any sort of kick in the shaft. I want this to almost be like a telephone pole. That way I know where the face is. Three wood is a super versatile club. It's a hard club to get right because I need it off the tee. I need it off the ground. I need to be able to spin it into a par five. I need to knuckle it off the tee. I need to be able to go both ways with it. So this is a very interesting club. It is just the QI10 Tour. Uh, I use 15 degrees of loft and I don't change the settings. I have the weight down the bottom, about halfway forward. Not all the way pushed forward, but about halfway forward. So let's start off the deck. Now, this is an interesting one. So that's carried, would I say, 277. So if I want to hit this, say, two, because most of the time I'm carrying three iron and then my three wood. So a lot of people think that's a big gap, but I should be able to here, if I want to get this down to like maybe two, high 240s carry now but just like a floating shot. So that's a big fade, really spinny. So my other three wood for reference was spinning about 3,000. That one there carried 252 and it spun at 4,050. So I've increased the spin, I've obviously aimed left, hit a big fade, and that's how I take a lot off this. I can put this off a T, similar to the two iron, and a little bit higher T. Now I feel like I can brush it off the top and kind of knuckle it. So that's what this will look like. Yeah, so that carry there, that's carrying more at that 280 mark, um, but that's, that's knocked down the spin to just above 3,000, so 3,100. So probably the club, I guess, that I'm known for. And this is a very different setup to anything that I've ever used before it. So. I think in the tailor-made fitting video, if you go back and look at that, I've used the Fujikura Pro 73 grams since I was 16, my entire career. They've discontinued that, I need to find something else. So, kind of, what have we moved into here? Um, we have the Acra Proto 75 MS. Immediately when I started hitting this at the Kingdom, it felt right, like it felt as close to my Fujikura as I've ever felt. I've played around with Ventus, I've played around with Tensei, and all these different shafts, and I've always found something, the Ventus always kicked too hard for me, I never liked the feel of that. Hazardous almost felt too heavy at points. Tensei is kind of counterbalanced, I'm pretty sure, that's, that didn't feel right in the grip. But immediately when I hit this, it felt stiff enough, but light enough, so I knew where the face was at all times, um, which was really good. The other change is I've always used the equivalent of the LS head in all my previous TaylorMade drivers. I've used Self Plus, I've used Sim instead of Sim Max. So I've always used a low spin version, but that is gonna change this year for me. I'm using the QI10 Core. So this is a little bit, to me, it feels like there's more of a crown here on the back of the club. There's just a little bit more room there. It looks more circle shaped as opposed to pear shaped. And so far since I've been playing with it, it is extremely stable. My driver is quite short, 44 and a half. I carry a lot of swing speed anyway, so that helps me keep it under control. I feel like I can rip it, hit it pretty straight. Everything else is pretty neutral for me. I always have it in that standard loft setting. I don't really vary from that ever with any of my drivers. I like to adjust my swing rather than the club itself. And the last thing is I carry a lefty wedge in my bag with me and that seems a bit weird. I just hit so many balls on one side of my body, right-handed, so kind of a lot of right side bend and stuff. I just like to hit 20, 30 a day the other side just to even out, hopefully that helps with injury. So that's basically the only reason I carry this in my bag as well. Alrighty, and then last but not least is the putter. I think a lot of you know 
I had the Nike in the bag for like eight years. Unfortunately, the Nike is no longer in the rotation, at least for now, it's always close by, but I am using a Circle T Terillium Tour Proto. As you can see here, it's an old school putter that's kind of been refinished. I use a white dot on the top and it has a long neck. The putter is actually face balanced, but it's a blade putter, which is quite cool. It is actually my roommate's Curtis Luck. You can see Lucky very, very faintly in the corner. He was trying it out, didn't like it. So I told him that I was going to be taking that. Blacked out shaft, blacked out grip. It's just a really cool look altogether. I've liked this. I've always liked to feel my stroke is very kind of straight back, straight through, especially on the short putts, but I've never liked a mallet putter. This is kind of best of both worlds for me. In terms of what's in my golf bag, there's a few different things. So if I reach into this first pocket, this is kind of going to be my training aids for the most part. So I use this ball. It's a variation on to a striker ball or any of those other balls you've seen, just kind of in between the arms. This is just for width kind of makes me keep my width and increase my turn. So that's kind of a basic, I'll travel with that everywhere. This is pretty funny. And I think the other part is just down here. I can, if I can reach down there, I can show you. I wanted a putting rail and I couldn't find one on the internet. So I went to Lowe's and I love Lowe's. I think it's a great store. And I just got some PVC pipe from the plumbing section and some connectors from the gardening section. And I made myself a little putting rail. So I travel with that everywhere. And the reason I like it like this is because just as you saw there, I can take it apart and put it in my golf bag and I can travel with it. So that cost me maybe seven bucks at Lowe's. So if you guys want to build yourself one, that's how you do it. So that's in my bag. On top of that, I just have my rain cover, which is in there. I have just some typical ibuprofen, things like that. You never know when you're gonna pull up a little sore or something like that and need that. Down the side here, I have putting mirror. I just put that underneath the rail, so that's just like my daily check-ins. I have my yardage book cover, which just says rough on this side. The boxing kangaroo from Australia over here. Um, take that with me everywhere. Crown Golf, which is the golf academy that my coach, Justin Pointer, runs just little brushes that I attach to my bag super important clean your grooves if you want to actually get some real numbers in here it's gonna have all my tees I'm not sure what I'm rocking at the moment Tuscana tees from Palm Springs in the desert where I practice out of um, we go down the front here and this is where I'm gonna have more of my sharpies ball line things uh, I'm gonna have tools to change kind of the loft and everything on my woods as you all know just coins, general ball markers, stuff like that. So pretty basic. I am using the new TP5X. Just a little different markings on the TP5X now, just through the side there. Nothing super different. I think this ball um, maybe just has a little bit more ball speed on it than the previous golf balls that we've used, which is nice. I use a tailor-made glove, just leather gloves. I pack those all down this side over here and I would normally carry an umbrella. Do alignment sticks with the Melbourne kind of alignment stick cover. All right guys, well that is everything for what is in my bag going into the 2024 season. Hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more insight to my visit to the kingdom a few weeks ago. Gives you a little bit more specifics on kind of the specs, the shafts, what I'm looking for out of my clubs and what I've ended up with. Uh, if you have any other questions, drop them down in the comments. I'd love to give you as many answers as possible about what's in my bag and maybe what you should put in yours for this season. So for the golf nerds out there, I hope you found that insightful. And if you're just joining us, thanks for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.